Good morning, everybody. It is uh, Tuesday, April 25th. This is the Jones Library Buildings and Facilities uh, meeting. This meeting is being recorded and will be available post-meeting on the Jones Library website. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just have everybody uh, uh, verbally say that they are present for the meeting. Uh, so, George? Here. Farah? Here. Uh, Alex, I'm here, and Library Director Sharon Cherry. Hi. Thank you for being here. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, um, first thing we have on our agenda is the uh, minutes from March 21st. Who would like to make a motion to approve those minutes? Motion to approve. And a second. Second. Great. I saw one typo. I think the, there was. Yeah, no, did you like not should be note or something like that? Yeah. yeah. Note. Yeah. I think it was on the first page. So you tell uh, me where. Number six C. Brutal oh, having, got it. Got it. Okay. Brutal, Thank brutal you. having an editor. I'm I'm happy that she doesn't like add all the commas and things or, or all the other mistakes that I know that are in there. So thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, so anyone any discussion about the minutes? Nope. Okay. So uh, this is uh, voting to approve the minutes of March 21st, 2023. Uh, George? Approved. Far. Approved. And Alex is also an approved. Um, the next item on our agenda is public comment. I see that we have three attendees. Um, if anyone would like to make a comment, you can raise your virtual hand and we will bring you into the room and we'd love to hear from you. Okay, seeing none, we will move on. First item on the agenda after that is the delivery van update, which I expect is gonna sound much like it has in the past, unless something exciting is happening. Yes, it will. Nothing new and exciting, so uh, no update. Great. Okay. Uh, the North Amherst Library Building Project uh, drove drove by that the other day on the the way up to uh, the Mill District area, and look looks like a lot's going on. So what's, yeah. what's the latest? I don't have any firsthand information as to where it is at, but. Like you, I drove by it and I saw that the the roof is on the addition and that they're working on the paintwork on the original structure. Uh, I was supposed to go into the building last week to take some measurements for the circulation desk, but I didn't make it over there. So I really don't have anything further that I can add. Uh, and I have some updates. Uh, we were over there with our with our IT folks uh, scoping out locations for security cameras. Um, Regarding the end date of the project, it's not clear yet. Um, they're, they're thinking they're still thinking August, but there's an issue with some parts, uh, electrical sockets that are required in order to get a certificate of occupancy. That's what I that's what I understand. Um, so, and, and the part has been on order for quite some time, um, and I'm not sure when it's slated to come in. So. The, uh, the timing of everything is very unclear. Uh, the other thing uh, regarding the North Amherst Library and, and costs, um, it, you know, I've been speaking with Sean and Paul about this for many years now. Um, so Sean, Jeremiah, and I got a chance to sit down for like a half an hour just to talk about how we're going to split up the costs for the building. And um, I was able to give them expenses going back to FY16. And um what we're talking about at this point is just like splitting the costs uh, and and see what happens after the first six months, the first year when it's open, you know, under normal operating uh, processes, you know, see how often the meeting room gets used, that kind of a thing. Um, and so right now it costs about four grand, you know, to run the building. And that doesn't, we're not talking about library staffing where we're still going to be responsible for library staffing. But as far as uh, building insurance and, and the maintenance and the utilities of the space, it's about four grand. So cut that in half. It'll be about two grand. 
give or take. Um, the actual, you know, usage of the meeting room that that's that's for the town to take care of the cleaning of the bathrooms. That's for the town to take care of just like at the Munson. Cause it's again, the, the you know, they're both uh, town buildings. Um, yeah. And the grounds costs and, and maintenance that will all continue to be for the town. So, um, so those are my updates. Do you have any questions? I'm not sure that I can answer, but go ahead, Farah. So Sharon, is this any different from how are the costs any different from what they were before? Is that no? So this is about the same. Well, well, that's what we're that's what we're starting with. I, you know, I can only assume that that the util that that it will be more efficient, but I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but George, do you want to? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we had converted the lighting to led a few years back but it's a combination of there's going to be a more efficient heating system in there but the building itself is going to be larger so it may just be a wash we we really won't know until we're you know until we've got a few seasons in okay thank you yeah you know it was just a starting point we were we were all like you know we're all on the same team and we're all just trying to figure it out together so I really appreciate, you know, the town being so cooperative and normal. <laughs> so can I clarify what was agreed to? Was it that we would pay half of the actual cost or we would pay half of our previous cost? Uh, 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 actual. It will be actual. Um, uh, so, for example, you know, insurance, I think the town is going to go out for uh, uh, to bid on insurance. So it would be awesome if those figures went down. Um, yeah. And whatever electrical, um, heating, whatever those costs are, it's so to be actual bills that come in. I just wanted to give them an idea. And so that's why I gave them numbers going back to FY16. Yeah. I guess I just want to make sure that the agreement that we have is that we'll split the cost not to exceed our current costs, right? Because I have no idea, like from an insurance perspective, if we've gone from, you know, a public library that sees, you know, X number of visitors to a publicly used meeting room that's accessed with, you know, after hour systems, I don't know how that changes our liability and what that does for our insurance. Um, you know, electrical costs, I mean, ideally, it's a more efficient system, but it's a system that I assume people have access to the meeting room after hour. So I, I don't want to make assumptions because for our budgeting purposes, we need to know what we're budgeting. So if we could clarify from them, we'll split the cost, but not to exceed what our current budgeted cost is. That would be, for me, I think I'd feel better about that. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, because there's the variable of, of the meeting room itself. And if that's getting used after hours, it's technically not a library service. Yeah. So why should we be paying for the electricity to keep that meeting room open after hours yeah and the added water for the bath yeah okay right i mean i mean i think there's going to be utility costs i think there's going to be an increase it's hopefully not going to be that much but again not knowing the usage of the space and i i'm assuming nobody's going to be you know tracking the electrical usage by hour to be like that's town cost so i just i don't want us to end up spending more in the end. So, Very so good. If you just add that caveat, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Um, so next up, if there's nothing more on North Amherst is the monthly building and grounds report. Um, I really have nothing new to add uh, since the last meeting. You know, we're still, we're still having some issues with graffiti and just overall, um, I don't want to call it vandalism, but there, there's definitely a lot more sloppiness going on <laughs> in the building lately. Um, you know, we're we're working on making the corners of the basement area that uh, our problem areas. We're working towards making them less accessible um, because they're really just blank spaces. So we're we're kind of working on some creative furniture moving and things like that. Uh, but other than that, I don't think I have anything new to add. Uh, the only other thing I would add is that I, I have to 
uh, contact Rob Mora to see if we can renew the permit for the tent uh, because that is an annual permit. Uh, we, knew it, we renewed it last year. Um, I am uncertain what their answer will be now that all the COVID protocols are gone. And that was the prime purpose of that tent. So uh, when I get a response from Rob, I'll certainly let Sharon know. Um, George, are there cameras where, where all this is going on? The um, there are There is some camera access. Uh, IT has been in the building and we've walked around and looked at where we could add cameras. Uh, to, to maybe capture these areas a little bit better. So we're also working on that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the, the building is is laid out with so many nooks and crannies that it's really impossible to capture all of the areas with what we have now. Uh, and even with adding cameras, there's still going to be spaces where we just will not be able mm -hmm. to see well. So, uh, but we are working on improving that. So does this involve you guys having to paint the walls or does it wash off or how does it work? Um, combination, depending on what it is. We are uh, repainting walls, cleaning them, uh, shampooing uh, furniture, wow. carpets, okay. things like that. Um, we did have an instance where a couple of the upholstered chairs were vandalized with Sharpies and mm -hmm. that did not shampoo out so we had to dispose of the chairs because of what was written on them uh so yeah it's it's just you know a little bit more work here and there yeah well sorry for going above and beyond <laughs> not sorry sorry and thank you for going above and beyond i can't imagine that it it's any fun to deal with this as well i'll pass that on to my staff thank yeah. you mm -hmm. do i know that we have um press in the building now and i know that press has um people who so i assume most of these are happening you know middle school high school especially on early release days making assumptions here um and i know that press has uh people who work in each of the school buildings are they are we and as well as in the library are we coordinating with them at all or is it there something like just that? it just started like they they we just uh got the office set up for them late last week uh so i oh so we, we, believe, have, an we, have, we yeah. have an office now yeah yeah in the it's in the av area it was formerly one of the av tech's offices um so they've they've literally just started having an in-building presence okay. so we really don't know what the we don't know how that's working yet they, they've literally just started and what are they do they have a plan yet for how like I think initially they were they were helping with clothes was I think was their original plan. This is probably outdated my understanding. I think originally they were helping sort of with the clothes of the building, and then now they're stepping up to having an office. So um, yeah, so so much has changed with Cress. Cress um, has is it, it, it it's ever evolving, and um, uh, so my problems. Our problems are happening in the basement where there is no staff sight lines. And so what I've done a couple of times this past month is in the afternoon, I go downstairs, I bring my laptop and I just hang out for four hours and, and the folks come, they sit down and, and they eat, they, you know, they enjoy their refreshments, um, but they're not doing the vandalism as long as there's a staff member there. Um, so it's it's more than just walkthroughs that we need. Unfortunately, I don't have an office. It, it, the problem is the building. Um, I don't have an office to give Cress in in the basement. Um, and so so this was the next best thing was giving them uh, an empty room that's in our AV area. We're going to create. Um, a, a seating slash meeting room space in the AV space uh, so that as we creatively rearrange furniture downstairs in the basement corners, it, it will uh, stop people from being downstairs, hanging out and bring them upstairs. Uh, so, so that, and then staff will be right there. Um, so I get that. That's what we're working on right now. We don't, 
we don't have a perfect solution. The vaping that's happening is, is happening uh, for people of all ages. And, um, and we have no way of knowing that, that it was being consumed outside of the building or once they were inside of the building, the smell is there. We're not catching anybody actually doing it, but it, it, it smells a lot. Um, and patrons are complaining, um, it's like this new, you know, society has made it legal. And, and now just like with smoking, you know, you, you don't walk around the building and people aren't smoking cigarettes. So now people have to learn that vaping is the same thing as smoking and you can't do that in public buildings. So it's like this retraining, new training for, for people. Vaping or are we talking smoking pot? Does vaping smell? I'm sorry. Both. Great question. Oh. No, both, both. I mean, I'm no expert. But... Yeah, I mean, okay. you you can do two things with the vape. There's there's oh, thank you. you know, okay, the, see, the, I don't know these There's things. there's the chemicals that, in theory, are supposed to wean you off of smoking, and but the chemicals themselves also smell. And vapes okay. can also be used to to smoke THC. And yeah. Okay. Can I ask one more question, Farah, and then I'll. Um, so. So as I'm down in the basement, right, you've got the area where the ESL is around one corner and then sort of that working area. And then you've got the Woodbury room and then you've got that long stretch of really, really tall um, stacks. And then you've got that sort of area that Celia created for the teens. Um, so when you go down and work, Sharon, where, like, is it possible to the extent that you're rearranging furniture, like, could we set up like a desk downstairs for Cress where you've been working and then also have the AV space so that we've got both? And so that that's what I would love. But A, so that Cress does need a telephone. They need electricity. In the corner that I sit, there there is neither. Uh, so we could, we could install all of that, that stuff at a cost. Um, and we're only going to be in the building for another, what month, what month are we in? We're in April, you know, we're only going to be here for the end of this calendar year. So we're weighing the pros and cons of actually spending money. Um, the other problem is the nook where I sit. It really only fits one person. The downside is that um, if you have to get up and walk away for a moment to use the restroom or, or whatever, you need to bring everything with you. You can't because there's no door. So, it, so the inconvenience factor is there, which is, so for all those reasons, that's why we, we said, let, let's give them an actual office with an actual door because they're not here just to help the library. They are providing services throughout. And this just happens to be their home base for two of their workers. So that, so this is, it's an ongoing discussion staff wide, Cress wide. Cress has been open to everything. They've been amazing. Paul has been open to everything. He's been amazing. Um, I think what I've seen on the li library listservs is that vandalism across the state in, in libraries in general is on the uptick. You know, we're, we're coming out of COVID. This is like the first year where it's kind of normal. Um, and, and kids for the past couple of years have been on lockdown. So they're, they're feeling they're, they're spreading their wings. Not, not that it, it's okay. I'm, I'm just saying there's a reason that it's a little bit more than usual. It's, it's also, it's also spring. We think it will die down a little bit as, as the summer comes along. How's that? <laughs> It's Good. exhausting. <laughs> uh, Far, you had another question? Where's Sharon? I'm so amazed by how positive you are. <laughs> I wish some of that would rub off on me. <laughs> Two, um, so I just, I don't know. Is, th is there no law against vaping inside buildings in the town? There is. There is. Okay, so what you're saying is they're doing it outside and coming in, but you but you don't know if they're doing it inside because sometimes it doesn't smell like in the middle school. Okay. We know we know it's happening inside. We okay. Have, we have caught individuals on camera actively vaping inside. So, so what do you do then? What are it's, so so keep in mind the cameras the are the, the cameras, cameras are, are after the fact. Yeah. Right. right. So we're not catching them in the act. 
uh, if we were to actually see it, we would ask them to leave for the, the day. You know, I think there's, we're all trying to be very careful because whoever these people are, regardless of how old they are, we want them to be here. So um, th that's a part of the equation too. Um, yeah, it's it, unfortunate. I mean, hard, we, yeah. we're not we're not actively watching the because that's the policy. We're not actively watching the camera system. Mm -hmm. um, and if that were to become the policy, we would basically need to hire somebody to watch the camera. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, it's definitely happening inside. Uh, people of all ages are vaping inside in the public areas and the common areas in the bathrooms. Uh, but it's 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 a very difficult thing to catch somebody actively doing it because mm -hmm. vapes are this tiny and it's not like a cigarette. You can you can literally just shove it in your pocket if somebody approaches you. And, it yeah. and, and so if some if somebody says to us it wasn't me, then yeah. you know what we're not gonna police do? officers. Yeah. What are we going to do? Um, we could call the police in, but is that really the path we want to take? I don't think so. Um, and and going back to our cameras, so our cameras are, they're old, they're, you know, eight, nine, 10 years old. And so when we get a picture and you, you take a still shot, you, they're very fuzzy, they're, they're very pixelated. So the cameras that were, the new cameras that we'll be installing are, are updated and, and it will be a clearer picture. So if it, if it ever comes down to us needing a photo, it, it will be better to um to say yes that is that person because right now it's it's unclear oh. are, we, are we okay from a budgetary perspective in terms of you know the extra labor and paint and furniture like do we need to be thinking about increasing budget anywhere to address this uptick or is it just on a kind of watch and see basis? I mean, we're kind of holding our own right now. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. we're not, for instance, like if a, if a piece of furniture gets damaged beyond repair from vandalism, we're not replacing it. We're just taking it away. Um, and to be clear, these were not fancy chairs. Uh, yeah. These were chairs that I think we got 25 bucks a piece from Ron. Um, yeah, anyway, so yeah, it's not like it's our fine arts collection. But we know that, you know, every new chair that comes in needs to be a wipeable surface or wood. No. Okay. Well, Should not I buy nothing. <sighs> Keep an eye on that for library chairs. Okay. Um, all right. Well, it's. I mean, it's great to hear that press is increasing their presence in the building, and um, it's great to hear that we are ever continuing to be creative in our solutions around um, the difficulties of the structure of our building. So, thank you to George, Sharon, and the staff for continuing to be creative in trying to meet the needs of, of the community. So thank you for that. Uh, anything else on building and grounds? No. Okay. Um, I just a quick question on the tent. Um, I know that we've been keeping the tent um, because I think the children's department in particular is continuing to use it. Um, I assume that's still the case and that's still they would want to continue to, to use it. Yeah, it's primary, primarily the children's department. Uh, the friends like to use it on occasion, for, primarily for like their book sale, things like that. Um, but yeah, the, it's primarily youth programming. That's so I guess at some it. point we should probably have a conversation. I mean, if this, if the permit's approved again, you know, is this something worth contemplating as a continued permanent structure is it only until the building project is completed because we'll have better air quality and better circulation and better and we won't have that need anymore yeah it, i mean honestly it makes a mess of our front yard um <laughs> I, uh so yes it's not, so, it's not attractive right right yeah. okay so if for some reason going going into our next item so if for some reason the Pro, the project doesn't move forward, we would probably need to add to our discussion 
sort of the benefits we're getting out of that tent and what are some long-term solutions? Yeah, um, definitely. To deal with. Okay. So, all right. So anything else on the buildings and grounds before we move on? Okay. Um, so the backup building planning project. So in our last meeting, we talked about the fact that town library have formed an internal working group to plan for the needed repairs if the project doesn't proceed. The group is Sharon, George, Rob, Mara, Jeremiah LaPlante, Sean, and then I think Stephanie also has been sort of consulting as needed in the process. And then that group, as I understand it, has identified the HVAC system as the most pressing issue and determined that the next step is to hire an engineer to develop the solution. Um, and that the request was that this process happened over the summer and it sounds like my understanding is that the, the spring off point for things beginning is after the design development cost estimate is received which is anticipated in the summer so is that i wasn't sure about the timing um but i agree with everything else that you said okay i just yeah. don't know about the timing i think Sh sean had had sent something that said the process would occur over the summer after the design development cost estimate which is kind of what we're holding. And so I guess, you know, in, in, in talking to, in either answering questions from town counselors or talking to other people, there, there seems to be some lack of clarity, um, which I think we need to uh, fix with the town and with the town manager or with, within that group. Um, and one of it we talked a little bit about last time is that the MOU states that, you know, that the parties, the library, the town are going to address the urgent repairs required to the building, including but not limited to. And so I know HVAC's been identified as the number one, but back when George made his list, I believe it was number four. So there are, there are three things that are at least as equally pressing. So, you know, George created that list. There's 12 or 13 items. That list is what generated the Western Builders quote. And so I, I guess some clarity around what town manager, what this group is envisioning in terms of the other repairs beyond the HVAC system. Um, and then I guess I also am still struggling with what what is plan B really? Like, what are we really doing? Because, you know, I, I went back and I was listening to the town council vote on um, the updated memorandum. Um, and I think, you know, there are a group of people who want plan B to be, you know, more of a space planning and green energy building and all of the things that we would love to do if this project doesn't move forward. But then there's uh, what I heard from town council, which was, you know, we already have plan B or what I heard from finance committee was our plan B was the Western builders quote, and it's a matter of how we execute it. So I guess I'm feeling a little unclear about what's being asked of us. And I, I want to make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and what's been asked of us. Um, so I, I guess for me, I don't know whether any of that's been answered yet, but I, those are sort of questions that I keep asking. And I, I feel like the timing and the process are being driven by town and not by the library. Um, and again, like, is that how it should be? And if, I mean, I know we're working together, but I also feel like, you know, it takes money to do what the next steps are if it's something beyond what we already have, um, which then puts us, uh, that puts the town sort of in charge of when they want to fund the next step. Yeah, I, I, you've hit the nail on all of the heads, Alex, and, and I don't know any of those answers. And I'm not sure that Paul does, but um, I, I have asked him to clarify publicly. Uh, um, I, I think it would be great if Paul came to either a buildings and facilities committee meeting, a budget committee meeting, or a trustee meeting, just so that we could all have a conversation about that. Because what town council, you brought up the three, the three possibilities, you know, are we talking about 
a space planning exercise? Uh, or uh, are we talking about all the Western builders um, issues? Or are we just talking HVAC? And uh, right now, Paul is only working on HVAC. Um, and so I, I am fine with whatever plan B should be, could be, would be, whatever the town could afford. But I, I think we all need to know exactly what that is. That way, when it's time for the next town council vote, we all understand that it's either, you know, plan A, the big, uh, the, the big project, or just HVAC or whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I worry, I worry that town council is going to have to make a, a vote without, I mean, my preference would be if, if town wants, you know, a plan B, you know, that they, you know, that they, they, they pay for. And, and the thing is, is if the project doesn't move forward, that 1.8 million that we've agreed to would go against whatever the costs are up front. But I mean, if they want to hire and pay for and we can start working with either the architect or the engineer, and then we have, you know, a full cost estimate of, of what it would be, you know, I, I, that would be great. I would be on board with that. I'm just struggling with, um, well, one, not being at these meetings, which I can't be, because then it would just be a full building that was on this committee meeting, so that's hard. But I, I yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I, I feel like whenever I'm talking to, you know, different town counselors or, you know, Sean, or I'm, I'm getting, I don't feel like everybody's on the same page. Um, no. And that concerns me. Yes. Because, and, and I don't even feel within the trustees, we're probably on the same page with what we're supposed to be doing. And that concerns me. So, you know, I think partially this needs to be a conversation for the full board and exactly what the expectation is and what everybody thinks that we've agreed to. But then also with town council, right? I mean, if town council is making a vote based on a memorandum and you have different town councilors who have different ideas about what this is, that's problematic. So it would be immensely helpful, I think, for this group, you know, and, and what we've been charged with to have some clarity that, that what we think and what, what everybody else thinks are the same, or at least for everybody to come to the same, the same place. Um, and the other point of, of where I've been hearing lack of clarity is, you know, the town's 15.8 million. And if we do the repair, town's going to just give us that money, which if that's the plan, that's fabulous. That means we could do a lot. We could do the repair B right away. Um, but that hasn't been the message that I've been hearing both through JCPC. And I don't know if you heard anything different, Farah, but that's not the message that I was hearing. And so again, if, you know, town councilors or town, like, I, I just, I, I would love to get everybody on the same page with the dates, the schedule, the order, the expectations. Um, so do we do that by, I mean, we've invited Rob and Jeremiah to this committee's meetings and they haven't. And I, it's above their, it, it, it's Paul. Okay. So whether we want to have that meeting here or whether we want to have it, you know, as a full trustee meeting, but I, I really feel strongly that it needs to happen because, yeah. you know, we signed this agreement in October. We sent them the, you know, all of the reports that we had back in October. George did a tour in November. Um, and I feel like we've provided everything that we're supposed to provide at this point and we're waiting on direction. And I, I would really like to receive that direction. Go ahead, Far. Yeah, just to add to what I think, yeah, it's it's a little frustrating to hear what what Alex has already said, you know, talking to people and people not having all the information, but there are too many rumors floating around about how there isn't a plan. I mean, first. Like, you know, I want the project to go through as much as anyone does. But I know that all of you are, you're working double because you're working on the project and you're working on a plan B. And I think there are too many people spread. I mean, there's too much misinformation out there and we need the facts. And like you've said, Sharon, I think we really should have Paul at the trustee meeting so that we can have all 
all the facts there and all the facts clarified and we can have you know whoever shows up and their report on it or whatever but the town needs all the facts so that we can stop this this misinformation campaign that's out there and and also just to just to let people know that if it doesn't go through we're going to lose a lot of these grants and oh, we're going to have a lot of pretty frustrated uh, elected officials at the state level who have gone above and beyond to help us get these grants and to do everything they could do to to try to move this pod project forward. So we're not going to have what we wanted with this building, right? So I'm, just fixing that HVAC system and jo George's boilers is not going to give us what we want, the teen space. I mean, what's going to happen? The vaping is still going to happen down there. I mean, and space all the, sorry, George, I just like, no, no. I'm just, I'm feeling a little frustrated right now because the more I think, think about this, like the more I think, I, the more I think about the fact that my teen will not be in that space. I want to make sure that the next few generations of teens have that space so we don't have these problems. They need a place to go to. That's not like loitering around lime red or or like Walter mentioned at our equity meeting last, you know, two weeks ago. He can't even go into lime red. So it's not like all the buildings in town are accessible for everybody, for all the kids. So too much misinformation. Sorry, I know I'm a, and you guys are doing above and beyond. So I just want to like say that I really appreciate, but we need to get the whole town like have the facts there so the whole town knows what's out there and doesn't listen to to all the misinformation out there thank you thank you yeah. i mean i'm i'm very concerned that there are people out there under the assumption that space planning is going to be part of plan b early on because there are so many other things that have to take precedence before we even consider space planning i mean we're just talking about hvac we haven't talked about the roof we haven't talked about electrical upgrades or or any kind of ada compliance upgrades or anything like that so space planning is way down that list as far as priorities go um i mean we're if we have to fix what we have there is a lot and 15.8 million dollars is just not going to get us space planning it's just not well i i I think for me, I mean, obviously I want the project to move forward, but my biggest fear in not having a clear and concise plan and direction from the town is that if the project doesn't move forward, you know, we don't, we don't have another year or two. Um, and I, I want to be, from the meetings we had with Western Builders it, and the meetings we had with Kuhn Riddle, my understanding, and George, you can tell me differently, is, I mean, there are cost savings to be had when we bundle things together. So if we are, if the plan is to deal with things piecemeal, right, you know, based on sort of as HVAC fails, we fix HVAC, you know, when the town feels they have money again, then we deal with the atrium, you know, when the town feels there's funding again, we deal with the fire suppression system. I mean, if that's the plan, um, then that's the plan, but we need to know that's the plan and we need to be able to, because I'm looking ahead at, you know, being on joint capital planning committee and, you know, we've talked about, um, you know, the, their, one of the recommendations this year was to create sort of an emergency fund or a, a more general fund for the library, like has been created for the schools now and for the other town buildings. And I think how much money, you know, we're asking for in that fund is going to be directly predicated upon how long how long are we drawing out you know the 12 or 14 things that need to be done and so if we're going to plan and we're going to budget for this and you know we've asked our budget committee to come up with funding right for this 1.8 million but i mean the hvac system alone is going to be i mean that's the 1.8 million we're doing is, is the hvac that doesn't even you know get into any of the other of the other issues, but I just, if we are going to make a plan, we have to have information. And I, I, I worry about not having something ready. Uh, you know, if town council takes a vote, whatever day it is, 
you know, the next day if we're not ordering, <laughs> you know, the new HVAC system, which as we know is already going to take a year, right? We're a year from the day we make that order at least. Um, so it's, if it's not fully planned and, you know, somebody clicks the button, you know, then it's two years and, and, and we know, we feel certain the HVAC system is not going to last that long. So I, I just, I can't stress enough to town management, <laughs> the importance of us moving forward with a plan. Um, sorry, Farah, I'll, I'll stop repeating myself. <laughs> this is very frustrating to me. No, I just wanted to, um, what you were talking about, JCPC, uh, Alex, even if, so if this, as some of this goes to JCPC, right? Just us having been there. Yeah, this will- all Earliest happen. it would go to JCPC is February of, that's when the meetings start, February of 2024. And then by the time the report comes out and some decisions have been made, and what we've learned from this year is there are like that, what was it? The, the snow thing that they needed, I've forgotten what it's called, but- um, The snowblower? The no, not the snowblower. There was a specific thing for uh, whatever it was. It was something really specific that came to the top of their request. Yeah. And um, I mean, it's still a year out to yeah. order something. So what do we look? I mean, if any of this went through, it would be like 2025, 2026. So we're going to sit in this old building I mean, I wish we had some of like Sharon's positive energy around this, but it's just feeling like it's, you know, what are we giving our town, right? And what are we giving our kids and our community if that is that were to be the case? Okay, so, so next steps, do we wanna ask Sharon to request that Paul, I mean, we have a, I assume he's not gonna be able to make it to our next, <laughs> trustee meeting because that's when is our next trustee meeting and is Paul the right person is it Paul and Sean is it having them come here I just I want to I want to have a some direction I guess from this committee about what we're asking Sharon to do um, in order to get the clarity that we're seeking um, you know, so, so I was thinking having him, I thought it would be fastest just to have him go to trustees. But we we talked about it yesterday during the budget committee. We're talking about it now uh, during buildings and facilities. Um, what else do we have coming up? Those, I mean, those are the two big uh committees that that would be involved in this so uh most of the trustees are you know have talked about it so that's why i thought it, it it's ready to go to trustees which i think is may 17th okay right may 17th at 5 p.m so i you know i don't know that he could attend but i um do you want to ask austin what his thoughts are first as, as to whether or not he thinks the right procedure would be to go to trustees or should it start here? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's probably our unilateral decision to make about, you know, telling the town manager to come to a trustee meeting. I don't think we. No, it would be an invitation. Certainly, yeah. certainly. Yeah. Or, or at a, or at a minimum, you know, if Paul's unable to attend, you know, do we put together a document of, you know, here are the questions that we have. And then it's a document that can be you know, sort of like we did with town council when town council had all of their questions in finance committee, you know, maybe, you know, we put together a, a document of, of, you know, here are the questions that we have and then have Sean and Paul answer them. And then it's a document that we can produce for, for the, for the trustees meeting. Okay. So maybe that's something, um, you know, maybe you reach out to Paul and Austin, see if Paul wants to come and if not, or can come. And if not, we create this document so ideally it would be part of the packet for the trustees meeting on the 17th that far sorry oh sorry i just want to say the equipment was a top dresser <laughs> that's what it was called gotcha. <laughs> george you have any thoughts sir yeah, I don't have any other thoughts than what I already stated. Yeah. 
just frustration. Yeah. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, we're sitting on what, 35, 36 million dollars already. Um, the thought of the town voting this down as that super cringy. It is, but the reality of the situation is that, you know, like putting emotion aside for a minute, like we need to have a plan and we need mm. to have a plan that's in the best interest of the building and, you know, whatever it takes to make sure that this building is safe and operational and the best building we can have for the public is, you know, and, and that's, what, that's, that's what we need to do. So, um, you know, I, I just, I think it's important that we get what we need from town so that everybody can live up to the agreement that was made. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so then Sharon, it's, Sharon, it's a very amorous problem. <laughs> so Sharon, I'll wait to hear back from you then about whether we create a document or whether they're going to come to the trustee meeting and then. Sounds good. Put something we'll go for together, you know, and figure out the best way to do that. So sounds good. Okay. Um, I don't have any topics uh, not anticipated by me. So uh, with that, unless anybody has anything else, I'm going to call the meeting to a close at 941. Thank you to the three participants. I think we had four at Thank one point you. who participated today. I uh, appreciate you coming to the meeting. Um, as I said, meetings recorded and available shortly on the Jones Library website. So thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye.